when uh, we would visit our hometown of Bridgeport, Connecticut, after we moved from Maine, of course, uh, we had relatives, and it was near a beach area called Seaside Park, and there were lots of uh, recreational areas there. But also, in this area, there were factories that have shut down some years ago, and we'd take a walk just to go by the seaside and stretch our legs. And uh, one of the times I noticed, I said, hey, look at all this stuff that's growing here. Wouldn't it be interesting to take a look at it and maybe see what's going on? So that's what we're doing in this uh, uh, short video. It's a little slide program. And as we walk around, again, any kind of plant growth, wherever it's occurring, if you think of the location and the climate and conditions, you're studying ecology. Now, a particular situation, and this was actually back probably in the 70s, that uh, over to this side, there's the ocean, well, Long Island Sound and Seaside Park. And these were recreational areas where actually they had a uh, circus or a carnival over on this side. And we would take a walk. And uh, this uh, factory was somewhat abandoned. And you'll find some in here. So what is left and what we see is the natural succession from places that were cared for to places that are sort of abandoned and they don't get a lot of gardening or landscaping. And walking down the street, we can see lots of things along the uh, curbing and edges here of where they're not maintained as we would think. And it's going to wildlife uh, some sort of succession. So that's what we're going to take a look at. And uh, uh, that's better. You don't have to stand on your head to see it. I had them upside down in some cases. OK, so as we walk down the street, Again, you see probably the factory or shop that's over to the left is either not maintaining or it's closed. But again, it gives us this rather unique opportunity to study the plant life. Now, in terms of succession, we would think that you might have some soil along the fence rail and uh, then material starts to accumulate. So you're sort of getting a little bit of succession. In some places, we'll see that there are grasses here. We can see a little bit in the back. But now shrubs have come in. And again, I can pick out perhaps a few of the names of things. And in past years, I would know more. But I kind of forget now as time goes by. But, uh, you know, there's one type here. There's another type there. There's something in here. Again, make a collection and uh, look at some sort of key or maybe have a knowledgeable person along that would know this. And you get a chance to study nature right there in the city. Now, again, the debris from previous seasons, this is called humus, that tends to build up and as it degrades, adds organic matter to the soil and allows other plants to grow. Again, this looks familiar, but I'm not going to venture to call it anything. Here we see some grasses over there. And grasses up in the top there, you can see the seed heads. Now, this one I know. This is called common mullen. 
and it has sort of a velvety plant, and then it's a biannual. It takes two years to go through its cycle. This part dies down and then has a rosette of leaves and shoots a spike up. And we can see this in some cases. Another common plant you'd find here is milkweed, believe it or not. So I remember seeing these things when I was a kid, too. Uh, there'd always be some places where they weren't maintained, and you get a little bit of ecological succession. Uh, one of the things we would often do when we went on these walks, we'd have a little garbage bag with us, and we'd pick up litter. Uh, I guess we didn't do it this time because it's still there. Now here we see, I believe, which is Queen Anne's Lace, maybe. And in here, again, I'm not going to say the names because I may be incorrect and I just don't know them. This looks like the common mullein a little bit here. And these are leaflets. Uh, these are compound leaves. And again, I'm not too sure. And then looking at the curb edge, where they have a little lawn, quote unquote, area. And look at the great variety of plants that have seeded there. And we can see in this area some. Uh, flowering weeds that will eventually develop into flowers and lots of other things growing down through here some grasses and other things okay uh, afar I thought that might be Queen's Anne's Lace but I'm not sure And there's common mullein in here. And again, another name for Queen's Anne's Lace, I believe, is wild carrot. Again, I'm not too sure. Now, these little white flowers, I believe, are part of a vine. Morning glory, maybe? And again, another specific weed or plant that's just growing there. And here we have a little bit of a shrub growing in the uh, curb area. Now, normally, if this were maintained, this would be cut down, but again, left to its ecological succession as various seeds get in there and the nature of the soil changes, the addition of humus, uh, it makes it more of a proper habitat in which these organisms can grow. And of course you get rainy weather so there's usually plenty of water. Ah, a little further down where we see a bush has really take it over the whole area here. So again, this would look like it's been abandoned and led to further ecological succession as these plants develop. So in a way, we should be saying, well, they're not being maintained, but it gives us a little eye into nature that we can find all around us and take advantage of studying things like this, the normal progression of something when something is abandoned, as it appears to be here. Ah, this is sumac. A very typical, it's been cut back apparently, and then it's sprouting out again. But thou, those leaves that I saw before, those leaflets, yeah, that's sumac, common sumac. And we see other things in the background. Often in places like this, if you're not careful, you might end up with poison ivy. And if you went to pick that, you'd get that uh, reaction. 
Now here's a utility post on which there is a firebox where in emergencies you can call, uh, pull the lever down, and uh, you can report a fire or call the police. And uh, here the utility pole is serving as a prop for this uh, vine-like plant. Uh, Mountain Glory is a vine-like plant a little bit, and I don't know, I see some white flowers there, but I'm not, again, super sure. But uh, these would encompass the whole tree after a while, unless it's maintained. And here's some of the grasses with the seed heads. And uh, is this a butter and eggs plant? It looks like that, the typical flower where it looks like scrambled eggs with a little butter on it. Again, I'm not going to try to identify these because I have forgotten what they are. And there's your typical initial pioneering species uh, where there is soil already, uh, grasses. And again, any place where the seed can fall into a suitable environment, if it's not maintained, will start to lead to some plant growth. And here is one again we find in lawns. Usually it's not this big because it's being trimmed back. Now take a guess as to what this might be. Does it look like teeth of the lion? I think so. And uh, the name of it is dandelion, Dante Leon, the teeth of a lion. And by the way, this is edible. You find this often. Uh, again, you may not want to pick it up from the street here, but in a pinch, uh, dandelion salad is very nice. And again, some of the others. And uh, you just see what's going on. Now, if you wanted to make a study of it, you could you know, just take a square meter of this, uh, plot out what's there, and then watch it through time and see, in a sense, ecological succession in action, even within an urban environment. And then on the other side of the road where you get heavy rain, there's often a little ponding that goes on. And uh, again, that would change the environment uh, somewhat from just the grass area to a little aquatic things. If you were to take a uh, uh, sample of this and look at under the microscope, you'd see all little protozoans and a and, uh, fun type of thing. And again, it's right available in a city environment or not necessarily a super city, but uh, the grasslands of the park area. And here's the typical lawn that is maintained on the uh, park area. And uh, you see a great variety of uh, organisms here as well. Red clover, which uh, adds nitrogen to the soil and helps with fertility. There are some grasses and uh, maybe a few other things too. Okay. And there's the actual place that we uh, were looking at. This was the carnival from a little different uh, view. And again, in a park area, believe it or not, you can see lots of ecology. Of course, the trees are there and this is maintained. But off to the side, we see that ecological succession along some abandoned areas and unkept areas which allow us to get a little closer view at nature. And I believe that will wind us up.